This is a Rolls Royce Spey 51214DW fitted to a BAC 111 delivering 12,000 pounds of thrust. It's a twin spool low bypass ratio engine. Here with the top part of the low pressure compressor removed you can see the five stage one two three four five stage low pressure compressor. The five stage low pressure compressor at the front is driven by the two low pressure turbines you can see rotating at the rear. This part of the engine is the 12 stage high pressure compressor and uh, that's driven by a two stage high pressure turbines here. So the 12 stage high pressure compressor here driven by two stages of high pressure turbine and at the front the five stage low pressure compressor which is driven by the two stage low pressure turbines at the rear. This part of the engine here there are 10 interconnected can annular combustion chambers. Combustion chambers 4 and 8 have the igniter fitted to them. Here at the bottom of the engine is one of the igniter plugs. The right hand gearbox incorporates the AC generator and we have the hydraulic pump and we have a centrifugal breather here. Here I'm showing you the rear of the right hand gearbox. This is where the air starter would be connected and here would be the constant speed drive. Recall that the CSDU constant speed drive unit is fitted in conjunction with the AC generator even though the RPM of the engine may be increasing or decreasing, this CSDU ensures that the RPM output is constant and therefore we have a constant frequency which is imperative for the AC supply of the aircraft. Because the engine is going to be used as a training aid, I've taken the opportunity to label up the engine where appropriate. This is the airflow control unit. Here we have the high pressure fuel shutoff valve and connected to the other side of that is the cabling which would be connected to the thrust lever in the cockpit. The airflow control system also controls the variable inlet guide vanes which controls the inlet guide vanes for the 12 stage high pressure compressor and then we've also got the bleed valve um, actuated here which uh, allows air to be bled off from the compressor on the seventh stage uh, for low RPM and for starting the engine. Recall that when you're starting the engine or at low RPMs there's going to be reduced back pressure in the combustion chamber as a result of that reduced back pressure, axial flow of air through the engine will increase and that will cause an imbalance between axial air flow and RPM. So by bleeding air off at low RPMs, we avoid that uh, undesirable scenario. Here we've got the fuel heater. Uh, the fuel is heated with uh, bleed air and beneath that we have the oil cooler. Here we have the control valves which uh, take air from the high pressure compressor uh, routes along this pipe and that's used to uh, heat the engine intake. That hot air from this pipe is diverted into two pipes which run the full circumference of the engine intake and uh, they're routed through the uh, inlet guide vanes. At the front of the engine you have the anti-icing air outlet connector. 
This part at the front here which is normally enclosed with the nose cone uh, is the low pressure compressor front bearing uh, metering and scavenge oil pumps. Here located uh, underneath the engine towards the rear is air tapped off for internal engine air sealing. Here we have the cabling for the, uh, the thermocouples which in this engine of the turbine gas temperature it's actually measuring the, uh, the gas which is exiting the, uh, the final stage of the low pressure turbine and that uh, TGT um, reading is presented to the pilot in the cockpit. Most engines these days measure exhaust gas temperature but this particular engine is TGT. Now this engine is approximately only 70% of the way completed, the way we want it for the educational facility. Um, once I've done a bit more work to it, I'll put another video on and point out a few more features on the engine.